Sup my dudes, Val here. Today I'm going to be talking about all the buffs and nerfs within this little mini update, the Swordmaster update. I'm going to let you guys know the next update coming, unless something changes, should be a pretty good size update. So there's not going to be any buffs or nerfs, at least as far as I know. Um, everything seems to be in a really good spot in the game right now, so I don't think anything's going to change. Just stuff's going to get added to it. So for big updates, I don't think there's going to be any buffs, at least nothing that I'm going to try to push personally. But, I want to explain the bus and nurse of this update exactly what all changed and basically what you can do from now. So, the very first thing we'll get into is the nerf, which is Mooj. Uh, Mooj got overall a 30% decrease. Um, if you guys are curious as to why the nerf is, is before she was able to basically have the highest damage output in the game with essentially being able to kill like 7 to 800 million HP enemies. Now, Mooj is more in line of the rest of the game. She can still kill about like a 380 to 400 mil enemy. Um, that's very, very strong. Still, still one of the best units in the game. Just now more in line. So about a 30% decrease. And then there's also a change to the stat line to make it so you get more value out of the last upgrade cost. Cost is still the same. Still a very expensive unit overall. Uh, but in the end... Basically, you're getting more value, and now the power matches the price a lot more, and still super, super strong. So, next up after Mooj, now that the Mooj nerf is out of the way, like I said, still very good. Still a top 5 unit, uh, just not absolutely blowing everybody out of the water damage-wise. So, after that, next we're going to get into another change that happened this update. Lady Emperor got changed into love throughout. Uh, Lady Emperor is love the entire time now. Boa is love from placement. This makes it so if you do not have Rias, you can still run Love Pressure. Because as you can see, Boa is on Love Pressure. So you can run something like Yuta, uh, Boa, DFL, and then some other stuff. In terms of just like having a Love Pressure team, you can even run the new Shiro on it. Uh, but this allows you to basically run the on-placement 100% crit rate combo that you could already run with Rias. Just a budget version of it if you do not have Rias. So that was kind of the whole point of this and the fact there's no other unit... Basically, this team lived or died on you having Rias. Uh, now you don't need Rias to actually make this be a thing. So that's really nice. Next up is Adorante. I'm going to go ahead and talk about Adorante and exactly what changed with her. Um, basically, her last three upgrades were giving a massive damage boost. Because that's whenever she unlocks her uh, active ability. Um, she was made to be more independent from idle, so you don't need idle as much with her. And she's going to be much more self-sustaining because her cooldown went from 150 seconds all the way down to 60 seconds on her 30 second uptime. So she has 50% uptime, whereas before she had like maybe 30% uptime. Um, now she has about a 50% uptime where it's 30 seconds on, 30 seconds off. So she has a 30 second window of power where she can reach up to 3 million attack stat. She's basically in a good spot in my opinion. Uh, she's going to be able to output a lot of damage like this. I think it's a really good step forward. So next up is Hikari. Um, gambling Sorcerer. Hikari. Basically Hikari got buffed from 30% crit rate to 77% crit rate. 77% uh, crit rate because memes because 777 jackpot number. And Hikari now off of that one little change is basically he's either he's one of the best like consistent uh on placement crit units as well as whenever he gets jackpot he's one of the best damage dealers in the game um in terms of jackpot he can out dps basically anybody if you manage to get all three on jackpot they will out deep they do the most damage in the game uh just the odds of that happening are not very high so yeah hikari got buffed to 77 percent crit rate now he's really really good in that regards and then finally, we have Todoroki, the man himself, who got shot in the leg unnecessarily. Uh, his last upgrade now accounts for 60% of his attacks. That he got a massive increase in his max upgrade, and his uh, final cost got increased to also compensate for the massive increase in power. And now he can reach about a 1.9 million to 2 million attack stat, as well as have his unique passive of Ice Flame. So I think he's actually going to be in a really solid spot going forward. I think he's a decent unit now. Um, he's now gone from basically unusable doo-doo to uh, playable. Now, if you really want to use Todoroki, you absolutely can. He has much more modernized stats, um, and he's able to actually input a good bit of damage out. But that's basically it for all the buffs, nerfs, and changes. Uh, yeah. Anyways, thank you guys for watching. They, like I said, there's not going to be another one of these because I don't plan on doing any buffs or nerfs unless... 
peem does something then i'll ask peem what uh he he did and make another video but as far as my end goes there's nothing i think really needs to change balance wise i think the game's in a really 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 healthy spot right now um yeah anyways if you guys have any questions comments concerns let me know in the comment section below thank you guys for watching i'll catch you guys in the next one peace